Hello, this is Palico Padge, and welcome back to the Curious Expedition Arctic Expansiona. Yes, it is version 1.2.0.6, which means since my little drunken exploration of this new expansion a few days ago now, there has been a, a slight little update, which is probably a couple of tweaks, you know, little little changes, balancing issues, stuff like that. Very boring, don't need to know about that. But as it stands right now, I am recording, what's the time? I am recording at 20 past 6 of the PM on Monday the 6th of March. And as it stands right now, there has been no patch notes released. There has been no super duper video from the guys over at Machine and Mensch. So that means we are winging it. We are doing a blind one, which is all well and good as it stands. But we're just going to have to play by ear, see what comes around, see what's new, and embrace it. Take it all in. Inhale the change. And exhale my rubbish intro. So, <laughs> let's crack on. New game, and as I stated in the last episode, you can, you can call it an episode, I suppose, just about, we have a new explorer on the, on the portrait gallery here, and it is Rolled Amundsen Schinfensenman. So, <laughs> uh, he is a legendary. Legendary, that is. He is orange. Straight away, no purples here. Or even greens. Straight to legendary. Key expedition leader during the heroic age of Antarctic Exploration. And he has the Arctic Explorer trait, which is reduced movement costs through deep snow, which we've yet to experience, hoping to do it now. We have here... A native animal handler with unmatched understanding of animals. This person is a fine choice if you want to gain the most out of your pack animals. Increases capacity of all pack animals. Now, the thing I was trying to click on before, and I accidentally picked up uh, H.P. Lovecraft, was to see if anyone else had this guy to start off with. I don't think they do. I think Raoul is the only guy to have a native animal handler as standard. Don't hold me to that. I'm no expert, and I'm not one to double-click on one of these other portraits and start a game with the wrong person again. So, so just take my word for it for the time being. And we also have two pack animals, handily enough, which are huskies. Man's best friend. Man's best friend. We then have some chocolate, some climbing gear, a shotgun, and some snowshoes. Don't know why I was going to say snow, but there we go. Ease is travelling over very snow, snowy underground. Over very... Ease is travelling over very snowy underground. Hmm. Take it as it is. But you'd have thought, the fact that he has the Arctic Explorer trait, you wouldn't need some snowshoes. Never mind. And we also have a ticket. The trading item used at polar stations. Ah. Well, that's something new. We haven't done that yet. But what do we actually know about Roald Amundsen? Well, I've hit up my old researching, which I don't think I've done one of these actually for a while. It's, oh, it's got to be at least three, four months since I've done one of these. Uh, and uh, I've consulted the wiki as, as per usual, and uh, I've, I've noted just the more interesting things and the more sort of big things about the guy. Because as I said, I know nothing about this guy at all. He was a, a, a complete shock when I saw him. I, I honestly expected Scott of the Antarctic. I don't know why. It's just when I think of polar Expedition leaders, as it were. Scott of the Antarctic is the one which jumps to mind. But I suppose that's because he, he went out and said, I'll be gone for some time and disappeared and never, never came back again and, and sort of sacrificed himself, supposedly sacrificed himself for the, the good of everyone else. I would personally say that it's a very heroic way of dying, but from a personal perspective, it makes me think that maybe he was eaten. <laughs> They're like, you, you got us here. You got us in this mess. You will die and feed the rest of us. And then when we got back to civilization, like, yeah, yeah, he was a, what a guy, what a guy. He, he was there and he, he said, I'll be gone for some time. Ha save the rations. You have the rations. I'll be gone for some time. But actually, they were munching down on him. But again, I digress. Raoul Amundsen, that's who we're looking at right now. So, Raoul Engelbrecht. Gravning Amundsen is his full name. I'm, I'm going to murder these names because they're like Northern European names and I'm just terrible. He was a Norwegian explorer of the polar regions, specifically the polar regions, and he is recognised as the first person without dispute as having reached both poles. That's, that means he, he travelled to both sides of the strip joint. First person to do it. And you've got to admire that. that, that he's, he was flashing out those dollar dollar notes so quick 
he managed to traverse from one side of the strip joint to the other. Just handing out those notes. This is terrible. You can tell I haven't done this for a while. Hume was off, I feel, just slightly. <laughs> anyway, he was born on the 16th of July, 1872, to a family of Norwegian ship owners and captains, and Raoul was the fourth son in the family. Now, his mother wasn't too keen on him going into the family tradition of maritime trade and encouraged him to become a doctor. And this is a promise he tried to fulfil up to the point of when his mum died, when he was 21 years old, to which point he quit university and then set out for a life at sea. Now, I'm not saying that was a bad career choice, but, and again, I, now let's get this th one thing straight. I am a homey person. I, I like my home. I like coming home. I like being warm. He went from a, what I would presume, back in the day, much like it is today, from going from a very sort of skilled, well-paying career, like a doctor, which can obviously lead on to other things, to becoming Captain Birdseye. Now, I've got no problems with that. And again, it's all about what makes you happy through your life. I'm not one to deny anybody happiness throughout their life. But I suppose from a financial perspective, it would have been a lot more encouraging to become a doctor and, and you know do that way but hey that that's that's where the cookie crumbles sometimes that's what he decided to do so it turns out the reason he did it was because he had this hidden lifelong desire inspired by another norwegian explorer called and i'm going to murder this fritschoff nansen's crossing of greenland in 1888 so he was what 16 years old when when this happened and he got into the papers so at a time when you get inspired by people quite easily I, I feel but even so and that's when he decided a life of intense explore exploration in the wilderness was his thing it was his it was his thing it was his beef that was what he wanted to do and yeah well you, you can't fault him for that i suppose we, we, well, we could pick it apart but we won't do now he did several different treks uh, the first one was the belgian antarctic expedition which ran from 1897 to 1899 he then went on to do the Northwest Passage exploration, which was the first expedition to successfully traverse Canada's Northwest Passage between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. That was between 1903 and 1906. Then he went on to do the South Pole expedition, which was 1910 to 1912, but that was actually incorporating two different attempts, as the first one was marred by extreme temperatures, which, you know, you can understand. It's, it's, it's snowy, it's cold, you know, it's, it's gonna get very cold down there. So that happened then. Then we had the Northeast Passage Expedition, which was the six, uh, between 1918 and 1920. And then in 1925, he completed reaching both poles by hitting the North Pole, accompanied by uh, a couple of guys called Lincoln Ellsworth and their pilot. And again, I do apologize with his name. Hajalmar Reiser Larsen and three other team members. And uh, he took, that was a bit of an unusual one because the others he actually trekked to, uh, with the, the North Pole expedition in 1925, he actually took two Dornier Doe J flying boats to the North Pole. And although landing several miles apart because of, of the weather, uh, the two teams did manage to successfully reunite. And over the next three weeks after discovering the North Pole for themselves, they then had to shovel 600 tons of snow off the frozen runway whilst only consuming one pound of food a day. That's about 600 grams of food. What the hell? What the hell? Now, to, to, that, now that to me, that, that, that is commitment. But then I suppose the other way of looking at it is, if I didn't, they'd die in the cold. <laughs> so, yeah, some could say it's commitment, some could say it's preservation of their own lives. Even so, that's still a hell of a feat. So what's a pound of food? Uh, a pound is the weight of a bag of sugar, generally. And I'm guessing, being in Antarctica, it would have been very high in, in, in sugar to get the calorie intake in. But even so, that's not a lot of food at all, especially if you're shoveling that amount of, sh of snow for so long. So kudos to that, kudos to that. And he died circa, that's a very important word here, the 18th of June, 1928, age 55. Now, why is the word circa important here? Well, it's because that's when they think he died. Basically, Amundsen disappeared 
with five crew around the 18th of June 1928 whilst flying on a rescue mission in the, in the Arctic, not the Antarctic. They were looking for a new airship called the Italia which had crashed while returning from the North Pole. It is believed that the plane crashed in fog in the Barents Sea and that Amundsen and his crew were killed in the crash or died shortly afterward. The search for Amundsen and, and the team was called off in September of 1928 by the Norwegian government and the bodies were never found. So it's another Amelia Earhart situation here. But in, in 2004, in uh, late August, uh, and in, sorry, in 2004 and in late August of 2009, the Royal Norwegian Navy used the unmanned submarine Hugen 1000 to search for the wreckage of Amundsen's plane. The search is focused on a 40 square mile, that's a 100 kilometers square area of the seafloor, but they found nothing from the Amundsen flight. So there we go. That's that's pretty interesting. That's a that's a, an interesting way to go. It's um, other than that. The wiki only really concentrates on what he did in his in each expedition, and they're, they're they're not the most interesting. By all means, have a look into it if if you want. But there was nothing that really grabbed me about each expedition to to write into the little uh, biopic I've just done that. But the only other thing was he found a way of procuring vitamin C and to fight against scurvy on his earlier exhibitions by killing the local wildlife and eating their meat. But other than that, yeah, not really a lot to talk about. But I suppose in itself, the fact that he managed to get to both North Pole and South Pole before anyone else is a, is a feat. So that's why he's in the game, I guess. So let's crack on. Enough jibber jabber. Let's crack on. Welcome back to the Explorers Club, dear friend. Have you heard that we are building a statue to honour our most famous member? Word is it that you have a good chance of seeing your likeness on that statue. However, I am afraid to tell you that you are not the only candidate. You and your rivals have six expeditions to prove who is the most famous explorer within our club. And we're against good old Charlie Darwin, Alistair Crowley, Frederick C. Sellis, and Alexander La David Neal. Now go explore, adventure awaits. Uh, because it's the first big update since the release of the game, and there's supposed to be a whole multitude of new things, we're just going to play on normal mode, and this way we can do the six expeditions, hopefully, as long as I don't make any silly mistakes, and just soak up as much of the new changes as we can and again i really i know i said this in the last video i really really dig this new map i think it looks absolutely fantastic and with that being said do we go to the demanding dry lands or do we go to the old jungle well they're pretty much the same aren't they there's no real difference they both got a village they both got one shrine so uh let's do the dry lands why not Full of anticipation, I arrived at the harbour. There were still some arrangements to be made, so I spent my time on the deck, enjoying the cool breeze. Sister Faye approached me while we waited. She had decided to leave Britain and demanded we guide her to a nearby village upon reaching our destination, in order to spread the word of God. What is it with these religious people demanding? I'd... Surely, you know, we're, you know, we're back in the, in the late 1800s, early 1900s here. The religion was... The forefront of everything you know if you didn't want to piss off god so therefore one would presume that you wouldn't have to demand anything it's be like ah sister Faye, i see you malingering down at the bottom of the boat there would you like a lift somewhere you know just like that as it turns out she's a raging alcoholic <laughs> great what's the name of our dogs willow and ghost ah oh, ghost okie doke oh were they male and female Oh, we might get a bit of bound chicka wow wow. Have a whole menagerie of huskies. That'd be great. I accepted since I would gladly promote and help spread the word of God. See, as I said, we're not one to upset people. So when we slink, we're on a horizontal two region map this time. As opposed to that vertical one we were on before, which was again quite interesting. Quite interesting. I was finishing up my morning ablutions as we arrived at our expedition area. The land lay open in front of us, like an invitation to an adventure. And we don't understand a word of what our Inuit and what Hand is saying. But even so. I applaud I applaud you, sir. I applaud you. Uh, let's just crack on. There's no reason for us to wait around. Sister Faye had pinpo pinpointed the location of the village she wanted to reach on our map. Ah! Not too far away. Well, let's crack on, I suppose. Nothing stopping us here. And into the village, we entered a native village. The villagers were apparently a shamanistic group. 
The villagers observed us with curiosity as our trek arrived at their settlement. We moved freely about the village and considered our options with these people. A peculiar stone idol was positioned front and centre of the village. The natives observed us with caution. They were polite and offered us what they could. Well, we are currently on one standing, so let's deliver the missionary. We accompanied the missionary to the village chief, who was a compulsive talker who told us about the preeminent landmarks to see in the region, including a holy shrine, which we marked on our map. We felt more than welcome and the villagers were seemingly excited about our presence. An elderly woman placed some food by the idol. Standing of three now, so we should be able to recruit someone. I sat down and spoke with the natives to find out if any adventurous spirits were enterprising enough to join my cause. A few moments later, I found a group of would-be new Trek members and needed to decide who to recruit. So we can have Nekrohexixi, the shaman, who's a horrible, horrible racist. We have Luxumo, the shaman, who's sort of got a Rihanna style of haircut there. And then we have Fekwi, the shaman, who's got a chain from the nose to the ear, it would appear. Uh, I don't think there's much difference, is there, really, between these two? One's got more loyalty than the other, which I suppose would help as far as letting them leave this this first expedition with us at the end. So, I guess it's going to be uh, Rihanna. Luxomo, the shaman, joined our trek. We felt more than welcome, and the villagers were seemingly excited about our presence. A small boy placed some plants by the idol. Well, let's rest. They're still happy with us, aren't they? Yes. As darkness fell, the natives lit a campfire and invited us to sit with them. The people of the tribe were celebrating a wedding. The ritual was quite intricate and fascinating. The couple seemed quite tense to my eyes. When I saw how the couple looked at each other, I understood they were able to choose free they were able to choose freely, unlike at home. When I saw how the couple looked at each other, I understood that they were able to choose freely, unlike at home. I'm guessing, again, this probably means that they weren't able to choose freely, unlike at home. That, that's, what I, that's what I would take out of that. Even so, we're here for the idol. Ah, and we don't get it. Well, we do, but we upset people at the same time. That's fine. The villagers caught us as we tried to abscond with the idol. They were terribly disappointed and drew their weapons. We fled as fast as we could before they were able to unleash their attack. It would be wise to never return to this place. That's all right, standing zero. I dig it. I dig it. Um, right, so. There is apparently still two more things in this village. In this village. In this region, should I say. So, let's go the long way around. Just in case there is something down here. Which there doesn't appear to be. Excellent. Uh, we'll head for this hill. This should cover the majority of the region now so we've got the one thing next to us here and the other one is all the way up there angry natives okay um well because we're playing on normal it's not like we have to make our way back to the boat so we want to cover as much as possible really so let's go northwards first 20 so i'll leave us eight and have a look in the cave we approached a cave. Its opening led into the darkness of unknown depths. We needed a torch in order to venture forth safely. Well, we got a chance. Come on, give me a freaking break. That's two rolls. We would have to endure without a torch. We pressed forth into the eerie gloom. Without warning, I noticed a strange noise followed by someone crying in pain. Eventually, our sight adjusted to the darkness. I saw that Hubbus was bleeding. His injury was grim, but he was unable to express what exactly had happened. That's because he doesn't speak our language. We arrived at a chamber. It seemed to be used by the natives of this region as some kind of cer ceremonial tomb. Within were large, wrapped bundles that seemed to hold the prodigious remains of dead bodies. Well, let's have a look. Many of the mummies were too old and fragile to be of any intrinsic value. However, after a thorough investigation, one was found to have sol solidity suitable for transport. Just the one. That's fine by me. Uh, right, are they actually on us or... I don't know if they're on us or not. They're... You'd have thought they'd be a bit more direct if they were coming at us. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, we need to eat chocolate anyway. What about if I wanted to go through there? 40%. Oh, listen to those new sound effects. Munchy, munch, munch. Yeah, they're coming for us. Boom. All right, well, let's try some battling then. Surprise attack. 
Ouch. Well, uh, that wasn't good. Eight, six, and six. We've got some Huskies. We've already lost one set of dice. Uh, well, all in, I guess. Ooh, what's that? Taunt. Uh, I don't think that's a good one to use. Because that means we're going to take the hits. He's only got six health. That doesn't scream good to me. Right of unity. Uh, that would be quite useful. Let's use that. Uh, then we'll use that. Strong claws. Well, I suppose we really need to take down the, the warrior first. If that's half the half the health, that's okay, I guess. And quick shots, we only need two more. Roll up. Uh, end round. Can I not roll again? Oh, I can. Right, so. Let's take the shield. And let's take down the main guy. And we'll taunt. I don't know what it's going to do. But let's... Oh! Right, so. We're letting the, the dog take the hit instead. The female dog, might I add. That seems a bit sex sexist, but there you go. Three evade. Who were... Uh, Okay, well, let's roll them. So, what do we have here? Claws. And that should take... Maybe not you down just yet. Look out! We'll just hold on to those for the time being. If I pull that down, will you... What's that? Faint, multi-attack, and enemy stunned? Let's do it. And a quick shot, and then what are these? Are these both taunts? They are. You kicked my dog. You kicked my dog. How very dare you. Uh, well, we'll heat them up, I guess. Uh, we'll almost take you out, I guess. On to the other doggy. Quick shot for two. Or is that is that a big claws? Strong claws, okay. So let's take you out. And then we'll shoot you. Is that it? Do I get another roll? Boo. Okay. Oh, that's it. You deed. Oh, <gasps> didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to do that. We'll just take... Let's see. I, I knew that was going to happen. Second time. Let's do it. Well, I'll do it twice if I could. But I can't. Oh, we lost some more standing. Ooh. Yellow mushroom. This peculiar mushroom is odorless and very rubbery to chew. It seems to have revitalizing effects on muscles. We like that. And some gold. Nice. Very nice. So we'll eat the cocoa leaves. Yeah, everyone's okay. We shall eat the mangoes. And we will eat the mushrooms. Because we're feeling strong. What's that mean? Oh, we've got a plus one capacity. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Now, where were we? Oh. oh. In the wilderness, it was nearly impossible to prevent an injury from being infected. Hubbard's wound had begun to fester and secrete an astonishing degree of pus. Oh dear. We came across a stone formation that seemed to be man-made. There were inscriptions etched into each rock. Perhaps they formed a sort of map. Well, let's check out the ruins. We pretty much know where that is anyway. Enough! We need to keep moving. I concur. Uh, is there anywhere we can get close to this? I'd feel a lot more comfortable if we were actually on the shrine. I don't mind taking a 20% hit. Oh, no. Didn't do it. The ongoing physical stress numbed our senses and led to negligent pathfinding. Luxumo stepped into a spear trap. I think you're going crazy, says our husky dog ghost. It looked freshly placed. The spears were coated with dark muck. The wound was surely infected. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, well, there's two more things to find here. We've got this one up here. Which I don't think we're going to get to. With what we've got right now. Yeah, let's just examine the shrine for the time being. We arrived at a majestic structure, seemingly a holy shrine to the inhabitants of the region. 
or manner of plant life grew towards the sun. A circle of dried up blood had been drawn around the whole structure as a warning for anybody that dared to enter. I could swear I heard the sound of rushing water beneath our feet. We carefully entered a well-preserved ceremonial chamber. It was a truly awe-inspiring sight. I held my breath as we discovered an ancient altar in its centre. More gold! I would not leave empty-handed. The artifact would sit atop the altar no longer. We grabbed what we could and hurried outside as enormous fountains of water burst through the ground and began to flood the surrounding area. We had to run like our lives depending upon it or drown in the Grand Lake forming around us. Well, I, I, I'm guessing we're going. Uh, and we're just going to have to run right, I guess, until we find something good. Anything good? Ooh, what be you? Right. Okay. So, th well, th this isn't good. This isn't good. Let's, let's carry on. I examined the strange, more than three metre high rock sculpture. Its cold eyes seemed to stare at us. Its presence made me uncomfortable and I decided to move on. I saw a few items by the statue which must have been put there by people from a nearby village. They were surely sacrificial offerings. Well, let's have a look. Thank the Lord. I'm going to take it all. We took what was useful to us from the offerings. Luxumo was visibly shaken by the encounter with the peculiar statue. That's fine, because it's all, it's all good in the hood. We've got lots of sanity now. Great. We do need to be careful on which way we're going to go, though. Got to stay away from the waters, or else we'd be drowning. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, we need to eat the berries. All gone. Yumsy. Oh, there it be. Well, I think it's a case of... Uh, for going this, there's no way of, of getting past that. We could go take on the raptor. The raptor's very early in the game. Usually it doesn't come into the first three or fourth expedition. So yeah, it's unusual to see that. Anyway, I digress. Let's explore. There was the Golden Pyramid, enthroned above the landscape. Hooray! You got something funny to say? Anything at all? Go on. Where's, where's your end saying? No? After such an endeavour, great joy overcame me. I knew that the name Roald Amundsen would not be forgotten. I congratulated Luxumo, but instead of happiness I saw regret. She would never leave these sacred grounds. Well, we've got a 50-50 chance, I suppose. She's okay. Being a shaman helps, definitely. Let's, let's give it a whirl. No. The dice have not been on our side this time round. There was no way to convince her otherwise. Luxumo decided to stay in her home country. History books, here I come. Boom. First expedition done with a new explorer. New world bonus. Speed bonus. What's the new world bonus then? What's, what's that all about? Uh, and new fame, 360. All Soma. All Soma. I wish I had a dog like that. So, what do we get to choose from? I wonder if we've got any new ones. We've got reduced movement costs in shallow rivers, occult vision reveals locations in stone circles, and lone survivor. Uh, I think we better go for waterproof there. Yeah! You got it, guys. Rock out. Oh! That's interesting. So you get to see what they bring back as well now, and how many points they accumulate. Boom! That's how we play that, son. Mr. Crowley, thought you were ahead there. Right, so we've got the idol. Uh, we're doing okay for fame. We are... Well, we're not that far ahead, but even so, we'll gift that. Uh, the mummy, that's worth a lot of fame. We'll do that one as well. So that puts us about... So we are 12 off 200 ahead. That's, that's, that's a decent... A decent amount. So we'll sell the rest, I think. Sell and sell and have a little bit of manis. And, uh, yeah, first expedition done. We're tidily ahead. Oh, I see Mr. Mister Darwin's going straight into the untouched Arctic. He's brave. And we get to choose in the next episode from the Looming Jungle and the Lunatic Desert. Sounds lovely. So we'll do that next time. Thank you for watching. As always, a like is appreciated. And I will catch you on the next episode. Take it easy.